All right, hi everyone. So this little piece of software that I'm showing you right now is a wonderful uh, voxel modeling software called Magica Voxel. And the reason why I'm using it is because it was very easy for me to create this little visual aid um, to help people with perspective. And I'm gonna try and show you some of the stuff which uh, I think a lot of schools just fail to convey. So let's talk about curvilinear perspective and just perspective in general. They always get you to draw the vanishing point and to use the rulers and to draw the rulers coming from the vanishing point. And let's use this software because it's able to do some real, this thing is doing some, maybe not exactly real time ray tracing, but it is doing some pretty good uh, fast ray tracing. And it's also applying some curvilinear distortion. If you look at those, red lines, you can see that they are clearly bending. I do that. I wonder if I can actually adjust. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can adjust the... Um, let's see. Here we are. Yeah, so if I dial that up and then I push us in. Ah, here we go. Now you get the real bend. Okay, perfect. So now... We can, I can show you a whole bunch of things in an in interactive manner. And if we look at the horizon, right? I was talking about how they always say this is horizon line, right? So if I just start looking down, we can see that it's clearly beginning. The horizon is clearly beginning to bend. This is, the it's not a horizon line. It's a horizon ring, right? Because you look down, <laughs> it, it becomes that. All right, so that, that's the thing is that it only turns into a line when you're looking right at it. And, you know, if we, well, you know, if I look up, again, it, it becomes a ring like that. The ground is now surrounding us when I look up versus when I look down. And the other thing is that if we were to, you know, gradually ascend into space, you know, we're eventually going to be looking down upon the horizon. So it, it's going to turn into that ring. So this is why I think it's really good. You know, get get yourself a copy of Magic of Voxel. It's free. Um, and it's made by uh, someone named F. Tracy, E-P-H-T-R-A-C-Y. Yeah, I'll, I'll put a link in the description for it. And a really good way to just teach yourself some things about perspective. So one of those things would be the horizon line. Uh, then the other thing I've done with this cube is I've obviously made a bunch of uh, axial lines aligned to the X, Y, and Z axes. Red is X, green is Y, blue is Z. In this case, it's a Z up uh, coordinate system. And these are straight lines, which after we look at the, you know, once you put perspective into there, they don't look very straight at all. They get all bent, and people call this lens distortion. <laughs> it's not lens, so the lens isn't distorting it. Uh, I guarantee you that. It's it's actually, um, you'll see this sort of distortion occurring because if I were to zoom in on any single part of this image, those lines gradually straighten out. You just don't see that subtle curvature. So because I've pulled the lens really wide and then pushed the camera in, the, the perspective distortion is what you're seeing. Now, why? You probably want to be wondering, why does the line do that weird curve? Okay, so let's put the lens back to a, a fairly standard, I don't know, well, maybe even with 90. You know what? 90 is good because we can still see it. Or, you know what? No, let's just put it down to like 75 maybe or even just turn off the lens distortion altogether. So if I turn off the lens distortion, everything looks straight, and this is probably what you're used to. Well, watch what happens to these lines, right? They're parallel right now. We just look at the green lines, or actually look at the red lines. You can see that they're parallel. And as I turn it over, turn it one way or the other, you'll see that they, they go down to a vanishing point way down there, and then now where that they, they don't converge on any vanishing point because they're parallel and now they form another vanishing point down there 
so you can see this kind of activity occurring and it happens on all the axes right so the blue lines are doing that as well and guess what the green lines which i have reflected you can see that they are forming a vanishing point well off kind of in the distance but you know if we were to turn it around they're also shooting off way back there so this is the kind of thing you can only tell when you're when you're tumbling this thing around all right these are just things that that you should just kind of catalog away in your head and just understand that whenever you take a box and you rotate it right is that with this box if i take this edge and i bend it and push it away right i'm pushing the vanishing point way up there right if i pull it this way you know i'm i'm bending the vanishing point around so here let's let's doodle some of that let's apply this knowledge right away oops Gotta fire up my uh, tablet control script. Okay, right. So if I take these lines and I'm, you know, if I want to push a corner away from me, right, I can push those vanishing points up there. Right? I'm just kind of sending them down like that. And then this part of the box. Again, I can, I can kind of push. Right, I'm shoving those vanishing points down that way. So this is the problem is that whenever you see a lot of these drawing books, they're static images. Right? And anytime someone draws a demonstration for you, it's a static image. This is why the 3D software is so useful because you can just keep tumbling the darn thing and you can see like how I'm pushing the different sides away from me. And as you push right as i push this this corner away from me right look what happens on the other side it starts to roll towards you so when you're doing box rotations you are pushing one side away from you there's an axis of rotation so if i start turning it around like um like there's this sort of axis of rotation there's this axis of rotation you could choose any axis of rotation you know this is another axis of rotation so what's happening is that one side of the um i guess a, a good way to think of this is if we were to take this box let's draw a sphere first okay and then somewhere within this sphere actually wait no i got it i got it i got it hold on hold on hold up hold up uh we'll fire wings 3d because wings 3d will give me a 3d sphere <laughs> voxel software is not is kind of not so good at drawing the spheres um okay here right so as I rotate, this is another free 3D piece of software. It's uh, called Wings 3D. As I rotate the sphere along an axis of rotation, you can see that one side of material, like this block, gets shoved off in the direction of rotation. Meanwhile, on the other side, over here, right, it means that we're, we're shoving this side off the horizon while at the same time, new material is coming out on the other side, right? You can see that. So anytime you rotate something, you're shoving it. You, you know, you're, you, you have to find the axis of rotation that you're rotating it in. And you're shoving things on off into the horizon on one side, right? There's the silhouette or off onto the edge of the silhouette. Meanwhile, on the other side, like these bits here, they're coming out of the silhouette. And then when they're in the middle this is where things flatten out the most so what i mean by flattening out is well if we look at this thing straight on it looks very rectangular the more it gets shoved off to the side the more it starts to flatten out the more it starts to sorry we start to see it edge on so there's edge on there's straight on right and it gets smushed off it kind of gets flattened out like that So it's this kind of thing where, you know, you have to do the, you have to draw like a rotation to be able to really understand all of these transitions that are occurring. And when I was talking, just to get back to the subject of lens distortion or perspective distortion, right? If we look way down there, we see lines converging like this. If we look at it straight on, they begin to dive, they begin to flatten out. And then when we turn it the other way, they converge the other way. So 
if you were to take three pictures, take a picture like this, where it converges off into the distance like this, take a picture like this, where it's flat on, and then take another picture like that, right? And you stitch them all together. Well, what do we get? Here, let's draw it. Let's say we have a picture and we have a vanishing, well, we have our horizon ring, <laughs> not horizon line, but we know it to be a horizon ring. Okay, so we see something like this where it's van going off into a vanishing point. Then we see, right, the line's kind of straightening out, right? They, they straighten out like that, and there's our horizon line. And then on the other side, we see the opposite. We see this kind of a, a convergence again, right? Something like that. Now, if we stitch all of these pictures together, in this case, I'm going to take the middle picture. embiggen the image and then we connect the lines together right this is what you get you get that's what you get you get this stitching to occur and oddly enough doesn't that look kind of like the lens distortion you get that that's why it does it it's not lens distortion it's perspective distortion it the reason the other thing to to take into account is that this is very far, right? This, these bits are very far. This is getting closer. This is really, really close. And then it gets further and further and further and further and further until it goes off into the distance like that. And let's put this thing into that. Let's, let's re-engage. There, there we are, right? We can see this edge is further away. This is very close. That's very far. If we look at it straight on like this, and let's crank that up to 90 or 120, so it's super high now, we can tell that this piece right here in the center is a lot closer than that piece. Those corners are further away. In fact, another thing I can do is I can just use... Let's use uh, one of these other colors that I have. Okay. And I'm going to draw. Oops. I just want to paint. Here we are. In fact, I can paint a whole line of things. Here we are. Okay. So a whole. We'll do it like that. We'll use these pixels for scale. So when I get in there, like, look at that. Look how much closer these, these pixels are. Like this, the, the actual physical size of this square versus the physical size of one of those squares, right? This is much, the physical sizes are identical, right? The squares, the, they're voxels. All the voxels are the same physical size. But perceptually, or from what we can see due to perspective, we know that those parts are further away. So the closer you get to the edge, the further, like on a convex object, typically the, the, the closer to the edge of the silhouette you get, the smaller the object is going to be. The, and, and, or not the smaller, but rather the further away it is, right? So this really drives home the idea that even though this is a flat planar surface, it's a cube, right? We zoom out. Oh, look, right? This thing looks, this cube looks totally normal. <laughs> right looks totally normal people are if i here just put it back to regular mode right like this this view that people are used to seeing that's just this right and with the horizon line well the horizon line it still looks fairly straight right if we zoom in on this thing and try and you know frame it like that the horizon line looks still fairly straight but you can see that slight bowing that slight bending in there, the horizon ring. So stop calling it a horizon line, start calling it a horizon ring. I'm just gonna move the camera around. Now we have this thing called eye level, right? So let's see, I'm gonna just put that up there, right? You can see that thing's at eye level and you can see how everything is straightening out. Everything at your eye level matches up with the horizon line. 
like that. And you can see how it bends now. It's bending. Things will bend around that horizon ring. But even the horizon ring can bend. When we start to look up into the sky, it begins to bend. We, we move to eye level. And you can, look at that. Even the red lines, even these, these red lines. I'm going to start spinning this thing around. I'm going to make some people nauseous. right? But as long as they're right at the eye level, you can see. Same thing here. We spin this thing around. It all just lines up. Tricky to do that. So that's a that that's the thing, right? It's like don't don't just draw a bunch of vanishing points and then you pull out a ruler and and go at it. It's like no, it, it it's, takes a while of, of drawing and just getting used to this kind of curvilinear perspective. Um, to really get the hang of it.